Hey guys, this is Torna. Today we're talking about a potentially huge emblem change that is coming to Magic the Gathering. Uh, this is unconfirmed. It's based off of a leaked card, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, you know, the leaked card could be fake. Who knows? I think that it's real and it looks realistic to me and makes sense as to it. It's not, you know, how some people make leaked cards and they're bonkers, insanely OP and stuff. Uh, this one looks, you know, pretty balanced. So uh, I'm going to go off of the fact that I think that it is potentially real, but it's also, you know, just talking about this in general. So uh, this is kind of similar to when we talked a little bit in the past about the token change based on of cards we've seen. Uh, eventually they go and confirm them within like the release notes and stuff. So the uh, the change here to the tokens for, for Dissa and for the Rals saga, which I can't remember the name of it. Uh, essentially the way they work is that they refer you to the Oracle. Uh, the Oracle card text for whatever that card is. So Tarmogoyf here, and then it was like Spell Gorge or Weird or something like that, I think it was. And it's like, this is the official, go look here for the official text and stuff in the card database. Um, this was to the for the change for mana values. So any token that was being created that was a token copy of an existing card would end up having a mana value because of the fact that it's essentially pull the gatherer information from it, which was a very interesting change. And I think that that was a great change. So what I'm talking about here is to do with emblems and it's to do with this card here that got leaked. Now, this card here, I am, as I said, uh, thinking that it is real. It looks realistic to me. Uh, as I said, the power, I don't think is insanely, like, I don't think it's insanely broken and stuff. Uh, this is essentially one of the biggest, like, uh, like, biggest creatures in uh, Assassin's Creed. It's like the, the the gods who are kind of behind, well, they're not really gods, they're, they're you know, the people who are behind everything that kind of happens within the Assassin's Creed uh, games. These are guys, kind of the guys who are in behind it. Uh, they are from like an ancient civilization that was insanely over, like oh, insanely powerful and, um, you know, had huge technologies and everything. So, uh, this is the capital line triad. Uh, so there, the, the card here is the one that was leaked. Uh, it's been un deep fried because apparently when people leak cards, they decide to deep fry it, which is awful. Uh, it is a mythic and down here it does say ACR and stuff. Uh, it's hard to read who the actual artist is and stuff, but I don't know. The card looks realistic to me. Uh, so its ability is those who came before this top part here, this spell costs one less to cast for each historic card in your graveyard. Uh, so that part there is, you know, really interesting. Uh, this is not likely like this set is a modern legal set. Um, you know, it's going to be a card that you could potentially find use in a historic deck of some kind. And we know that with, with Assassin's Creed, there's going to be a lot of historic cards. Like, you know, all the different leaders of the Templar and the leaders of the Assassins and all the different protagonists from the Assassins and all that kind of stuff. As well as we know that there's going to be a whole bunch of different uh, artifacts as well. Like, you know, all the different weapons and stuff from it and all that kind of stuff, you know, the, the pieces of Eden and stuff that these guys created, all that kind of stuff we know is going to be in there. Like, we've already seen the spoilers for that. So, the second ability here is the part that we're talking about, though. Exile any number of historic cards from your graveyard with a total mana value of 30 or greater, and then you get an emblem with creatures you control have base power and toughness 9-9. Nine, nine. So this part here is a very interesting thing. This card giving you an emblem. Now all of like everything on this card like looks accurate. Um, you know, the, the text and stuff like that is all formatted correctly in my opinion. So we'll, we'll just assume that it's a real card. And I think that I, I'm pretty safe saying that this is going to be a real card. So... The fact that this is a card that is giving you an emblem is incredibly, incredibly weird. Typically, you know, uh, in the past, so this is just talking about them. They are, you know, the three issue scientists who dedicated themselves to doing stuff and saving the world and stuff. Um, that, that's their kind of lore and stuff. All right. So typically emblems in the past have all been tied to 
you know, planeswalkers, right? Like all the kind of emblems are their ultimate abilities usually create an emblem with, you get an emblem with, etc. And this is phrased the same way here. You get an emblem with. So these emblems are all kind of tied to planeswalkers, but not exactly, right? Like, so, you know, historically they were, and then we got the ring. The ring is technically an emblem. You get an emblem named the ring at the time that the ring tempts you. And then you get to uh, level up that emblem and stuff. Like this is the emblem that is tied to uh, one of your characters and stuff. And this is an emblem that is actually created by not a planeswalker. So this is like the first emblem that was created by not a planeswalker, right? However, they then did this. So this here is the Boulders Gate Wilderness. Uh, this is a special dungeon that was only available as a part of the Boulders Gate events that were happening or are happening or haven't happened yet at, um, at your local, uh, your local game store. Uh, any kind of, you know, ones that were doing this and they get these special promo boulders gate wilderness that are special dungeons however this dungeon here actually has an emblem down here that is you get an emblem with creatures you control get plus two plus two and have trample so that is now two different things this one here is you know a special event thing so i don't think it's necessarily you know canon like it could just be for the event and stuff like that but at least they're kind of you know trying out kind of giving emblems not tied to planeswalkers and the same one going here so uh one thing to note about the monarch and city blessing those are not emblems they are uh distinctions i believe they're called or something along along those lines they are not emblems uh they you know they they're similar kind of thing but they're not actually emblems while both of these two the ring and the Baldur's gate wilderness do actually create emblems and you know currently uh planeswalkers as well as the main way you're going to be getting them so couple interesting things about here is this would create, you know, a whole bunch of more kind of design space for them to create emblems. But that's not all. Uh, there are currently cards in the game that function very kind of similar to emblems, right? So stuff like Finale of Revelation, Seagate's Restoration, I believe, uh, both of those give you... You have no maximum hand size until the end of the game. That is a thing that fundamentally changes how your you know your play goes right similar to like say for example this one here giving all your creatures plus two plus two and trample that's just something that exists that's your that's you you have that for the rest of the game there's no way to get rid of it there's no way to change it or anything same with finale of revelation here this gives you no maximum hand size until the end of the game this is the kind of thing that they could easily replace with an emblem or stigma lasher here. This gives it so that whenever you, it deals damage to a player, that player can't gain life until the end of the game. So similar to that, right? Um, that's essentially giving an emblem that is you can't gain life until the end of the game. Now, one thing that is interesting is that Elspeth, the this Elspeth here, when she originally came out, this was, I believe, prior to them actually adding in emblems, this had the same phrasing as these kind of, you know, Finale of Revelation and Stigma Lasher, right? It just says, for the rest of the game, artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and lands you control are indestructible. So, this was eventually errated. I believe the new version of this now gives you a gives you an emblem that says that, right? Uh, the one that was printed, you know, later on. Um, what's this set here? Uh, the Mythic Edition version of this card, or at least that, you know, the later versions of this, Secret Lairs and stuff, they all had printed, you get an emblem with this on it. However, the original version of this did not have it. It just said, for the rest of the game. Again, very similar to this, for the rest of the game. So, maybe this is what Wizards of the Coast is kind of changing that kind of thing for, right? Like, this could have easily been phrased until the end of the game, creatures you control have base power and toughness 9-9. Nine, nine. And that would have been really interesting and really strong, but it's those kinds of things that are less, in my opinion, and you guys may not agree with it, less player friendly, because you need to then remember that. Uh, and, you know, some people are going to remember it, but it's also something you can then, you know, 
put out onto the table. Everyone can kind of see it. And, you know, they can see, oh, yes, he has that emblem that makes all these creatures base toughness 9-9. Nine, nine. And when you look at something, you know, this is a modern legal card. So it's potentially, you know, you're going to be playing it in 1v1s and stuff. But even in something like Commander is where I'm kind of thinking as well, is that there is a lot going on in a Commander game. There is a lot going on in a commander game between all four kind of players and stuff. This is going to make it easier for that kind of stuff to be remembered, not missed, especially for new players. It's very new player friendly because an emblem on the table represented by an actual physical card is easier for people than needing to just remember it exists. It's kind of dumbing it down a little bit. Don't get me wrong, but I think that it's a good dumbing it down. It's not like a, you know, making it easier or anything. It's just a way to make it simpler for stuff that exists that isn't kind of, you know, necessary to remember. And again, they've already done it with like, you know, the, the planeswalkers already have it. The, the ring is the first kind of non planeswalker that was giving you emblems and stuff. And you know, this one here. So I'd love to hear from you guys as to what you think. Do you think that this is a good change? Do you think this card's real? Do you think that, you know, um, You'd love to see more of these and, you know, potentially retconning or, you know, going back and changing these so they give you an emblem that says you can't, you have no maximum hand size or something. Let me know down in the comments. Have a great day and goodbye.